Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. So the first question I'm going to ask today is, do we have any marketers listening? Or is MarTech your thing? If so, you're in for a treat today. Because Foresight Insights addresses a critical issue for VPs of marketing using Salesforce.com and helps them get accurate performance information about their marketing campaigns. But Bonnie Crater, she's the CEO of Full Circle Insights, and Bonnie's going to join me today to discuss the overwhelming amount of data that's now collected and how that very often most of it is being wasted, inferred incorrectly, or even used to create alternative facts. Now, as the CEO of a leading MarTech company right in the heart of Silicon Valley, I'm really looking forward to hearing her insights from the industry and maybe if she can provide a few tips about harnessing the right data and using it to create actionable insights that inform business decisions because it's not all about the technology and it's about those results. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to San Francisco so we can speak with Bonnie Crater, CEO of Full Circle Insights. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Bonnie. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, sure. I'm Bonnie Crater. I'm CEO of Full Circle Insights. We are a marketing analytics company that helps B2B marketers get the visibility they need in order to do their jobs better. Now, I also believe Full Sight Insights offers marketing and sales performance management for Salesforce users, but that's just a small part of what you do. So can you tell me more about what kind of problems you solve for your customers and also the technology that's at the heart of what you guys are doing? Yeah, we help B2B marketers mostly. So those are companies that are selling to businesses, so yeah. business to business marketing. And the thing that we do the, the most and the best is we give those marketers visibility into what happens to every lead that they generate for their companies. And we keep all the data around that so they can figure out which campaigns are actually having the most impact on the sales of the company. So this is really wonderful stuff because uh, companies that uh, follow our use our software and follow our methodology get about a 30% bump up in the act actual amount that they're spending on marketing. So it gives them really good information about how to make decisions. So if they see campaigns that are really impacting sales the most, they can do more of those kinds of programs. If they see campaigns that are not impacting sales, they can significantly change those campaigns uh, or eliminate them entirely. So in addition to just giving folks the visibility they need in order to succeed and then giving them information about which campaigns are uh, worthy of additional investment and which should be eliminated or uh, have less investment. We also have all that data residing inside a common system that both sales and marketing can access and that's uh, the CRM system and we like salesforce.com. So because sales and marketing see the same data, they can um, make decisions together. You know, on the PL today, right, if you look at your profit and loss statement, sales and marketing appears on the same line. But oftentimes, sales and marketing are working on different planets, if you will. And so by having data in the same place, they can see the same information and then they can act together and work together really well. And another problem that we're seeing more and more now is the overwhelming amount of data that is being collected, but actually being completely wasted, inferred incorrectly, or even used to create alternative facts. I mean, can you tell me a bit more about that and the kind of findings that you're getting from that? Yeah, so it's very, very common for commonly used workflows in sales and marketing processes to actually not collect the right data or overwrite the data or change the data in a way that gives you misinformation. So at Full Circle, we've taken great care to try to figure all this out and make sure that data is not overwritten, that there's a complete historical record that's kept of all the information, that data that might be stored in multiple places is aligned, and so you don't get multiple answers for the same question. So taking care of the data and making sure it's stored in one place so the data is correct, not overwritten, or uh, or mismanaged is really, really important. And we've taken great care in building our application to do that. 
So as the CEO of a leading MarTech company in the middle of Silicon Valley, uh, can you provide any tips for harnessing the right data and actually how to use it to create actionable insights that actually inform those business decisions? Sure. So um, we start off with advising people to put all the sales and marketing data in one place. Uh, we advise putting the data into the CRM system. As I mentioned, we like salesforce.com as a place, as a data store for all that information. But there's really four kinds of things that we recommend folks do. One is to use the data for, uh, for planning purposes. So you take your results that you had from last year, you look at the sales goal for next year, uh, you do create what's called a reverse waterfall or a reverse funnel by looking at the conversion rates from all your leads to, the, to sales and do it in reverse, taking into account what your average deal size is that you want to try to drive. And then that can drive the number of leads that you want to uh, generate or need to generate in order to meet your sales goal. Um, so that planning process. Second is once you, when you're in this planning process, you typically are setting goals for the following year. And so we recommend that folks on um, a regular basis measure how well the companies are uh, actively achieving those goals or not achieving the goals and making sure that re by reviewing those on a regular basis and a regular cadence of meetings, that they address any issues that might crop up. Then the third thing is around optimizing, optimizing that lead pr management process between marketers and salespeople. So a very tricky part about lead management inside every B2B company is the handoff between marketing and sales. So the leads are passed from marketing to sales and understanding um, and ensuring that there's, there's good follow-up um, of those leads is really important. So getting visibility into what's happening to all the leads and how they're being followed up on and which leads are good and which leads are bad or which campaigns are driving good leads or which campaigns are driving or creating and offering up bad leads to salespeople. Those are, that's important information for marketers to know. And then the last piece of it is evaluating. And so really taking stock of the entire portfolio of marketing programs that a company might run and say, you know, these campaigns are really the ones that are really driving uh, sales and working really well for the sales team, uh, teeing up the right kinds of people, the right kinds of deals for the salespeople to close. These campaigns, not so much. I think we're going to change our portfolio uh, and mix of marketing that we're doing over time. So those are the four things that we recommend that all companies do with their marketing analytics processes. Now, a few moments ago, you did mention the word measure. And in a former life, I worked in IT and service improvement. And I quickly learned that you can only actually improve what you can measure. And I assume it's the same in marketing. So are marketers essentially only as good as the metrics they track? And if so, what metrics should they be tracking? Yeah, so traditionally, marketers have tracked what we call top of the funnel metrics, meaning how many clicks they might have on an ad or how many responses they might have to uh, an email they might send. But that's really not good enough because it doesn't tell you whether your campaign is actually driving sales. So you need to connect all of that clicking and responding information to the actual end result of the sale and then really understand what happens at every stage in between. And so because of that, when you get a, if you can actually do that and measure those, those things, we call those funnel metrics and attribution metrics, that's the impact uh, metric on revenue. If you're able to measure all of those things, you'll get a really good idea how your business functions. And then you can actually ch make changes and optimize around those metrics. So we, we're big fans of funnel metrics and attribution metrics. So as a MarTech company, how have you seen technology transform the industry as a whole? And what kind of tech challenges um, are businesses coming to you for help with? Yeah. So uh, MarTech as a a space. Uh, there's it, when we started our company, there might have been 500 companies in the Martech space, and now there's over 5,000 companies that um, are offering various types of Martech offerings, which um, it is, is an astounding number of, of solutions. Mm -hmm. And so it can be very, very challenging for um, uh, companies to try to select the right portfolio of technology solutions to automate marketing. Marketing is the last department of all companies that's you know, really been automated. Um, marketing automation was sort of the first foray into this, and that really didn't uh, uh, become a, uh, a you know a popular application until even just a few years ago. So, 
because market, MarTech is kind of a new area which companies are, are automating, there are just so, ma- so many choices. Um, of course, we think um, that um, not you want to automate uh, certain processes to be more efficient about how uh, you're spending your uh, your marketing dollars, but also a very important is being able to to be- measure and having systems that allow you to accurately measure the impact of all that marketing spend on campaigns. Now, thankfully, things have changed a lot. But if I go back to my my IT days again, traditionally IT departments frustrated the life out of marketing with their slow and cautious ways that seem to conflict with anything creative. But we now have complex t- technologies such as AI and machine learning that are critical to marketers. So how have you seen that relationship between IT and marketing evolve over the years and that dependence on technology now? Well, just like PCs were adopted inside companies by individuals or individual departments, uh, marketing uh, when uh, dis- when marketing departments discovered that there was this cool MarTech technology, they just bought it themselves as yeah. opposed to asking permission. And so, you know, when that happens and you have uh, solutions, technology solutions that are affecting the data of a company, and the IT department is responsible for the company's data, you'll have uh, a little bit of conflict going on there. And so what's happened over time is that many marketing departments have harnessed the skills of the IT department to help them with ensuring that the data that they are manipulating, their cu- the critical customer data, is uh, is being managed and stored in a safe and secure way, uh, and also maintaining the accuracy of the data. So uh, over time, it, while marketing has been avoiding uh, interactions with IT, uh, we're, we're seeing more and more IT departments getting involved in these MarkTech solutions, which is a good thing, because the IT department is typically more skilled in managing and securing and storing data for the company. So one trend that we haven't been able to avoid this year, of course, is blockchain. So I mean, how do you see that affecting marketing over the next few years? Because isn't its infancy at the moment, but there seems little doubt the impact it's going to have. Yeah, so blockchain is is, a, is an interesting technology. It's really a ledger type technology that allows you to ensure a transaction has taken place. And so that's why it's very a popular technology to be used with currencies, because you want to know how much money you have or or not. And so with marketing transactions, I think we're still in the very early phases of discovering how blockchain might be applicable. In marketing, everything changes all the time. You're, uh, if, you're, if you have a company and you're selling products, your customers are changing, your, your, your targets are changing, your products are changing, the markets are changing, you know, everything is changing. And so uh, I think we're still in, the, in our infancy of trying to discover exactly how a technology that ensures a transaction happens is going to be, uh, is going to be useful and being used in, the, in, uh, uh, in marketing type of, type of work. Now, at Full Circle Insights, I love how you believe that you shouldn't need a PhD in statistics to actually understand what's happening with your marketing campaigns. Can you tell me a little bit more about why that's so important to you? Yeah, uh, marketers typically uh, come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, We are adding more and more data scientists to our marketing department. But most people in marketing are not data scientists, and they uh, have, uh, and many of the the people in marketing have a creative bent. And so, what we at Full Circle wanted to do was to create a system which was relatively easy uh, for marketers to get information about the results of their campaigns so they could easily see, oh gosh, that that campaign drove a lot of leads and it drove a lot of deals. That's a good one. And make it really easy for folks to make decisions about how to manage their portfolio of the many, many marketing campaigns they might be running simultaneously. So I'm curious, do you have any use cases of, that would help the listeners, well, would give the listeners a before and after picture and the kind of tangible results that your customers have secured since uh, implementing Full Circle? Sure. So um, we uh, have many, many success stories. Um, one uh, was a technology company, it's a mid-sized company around $50 million in size. Uh, they had had a, uh, quite a bit of marketing turnover, which is pretty common. Um, they'd, I think they were on their third CMO. And so that when the new CMO came on board, they discovered that they had um, they had this tool full circle. And uh, they wanted to create a baseline measurement of what they of the, of the campaigns that they were currently running. And so they were using the tool to establish that baseline, and then they were they used the tool to understand which campaigns were really the key drivers for their business and which campaigns were kind of a waste of money. And so they were able to 
to really optimize their portfolio to such a degree that uh, within a uh, a very pretty short period of time, six to nine months, they were able to really turn their uh, marketing department around where they were able to run a set of campaigns that was literally twice as efficient as in the previous set, the previous marketing plan. So literally they were getting not only twice the number of leads out of the same marketing dollar, but it was twice the number of deals out of the same marketing dollar. So it was really um, a wonderful thing for them. So they uh, they gained an insanely awesome insight about how their business was running and how they could make it better. And those uh, marketing people became heroes and they were promoted um, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, added a lot of value to their company. And they were very proud of that fact. And we're proud of the fact that they were able to be so successful as well. Fantastic. Well, a huge thank you for coming on today. But before I do let you go, could I just ask that you remind listeners of where they can find you online and also maybe contact or remember your team if they have any questions. Sure. Our software is available for discovery at www.fullcircleinsights.com. And feel free to request a demo. Just click on a button, say request a demo, or contact us, and we'd be happy to follow up. Excellent. I think all too often we hear about businesses just getting a little bit too obsessed with the latest shiny tech uh, or going straight into solution mode. But what I love about what you're doing there is you're actually harnessing the right data and using it to create actionable insights to inform business decisions. And that is what it's all about. It really is. So a big thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much, Neil. Love to uh, chat with you today. I love chatting with Bonnie today, and and we cannot underestimate just how valuable it is. Hearing insights directly from a CEO of a leading MarTech company right in the heart of Silicon Valley and being able to beam it all around the world to you guys listening. And people often ask me, Neil, why do you record this daily tech podcast? And I recently read a great quote from Larry King who said, I will never learn a thing from talking. I only learn by listening. And listening to Bonnie talk today about really important issues and how she has seen technology transform the entire industry and what tech challenges are directly facing businesses and coming to her with are so important. But hey, that's me. What about you? Email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com or tweet me at Neil C. Hughes. I love to hear your insights and your experiences and what you've thought of today's episode, and indeed any of the episodes. So keep those coming in. But that's it for me, gang. So keep those messages and tweets coming in, and I'll speak to you real, real soon. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.